Good evening. More than 11,000 people are now thought to have been killed in southern Asia. More than 4,000 people are thought to have died. It's in the pattern of tectonic plates dividing the Earth's surface. 80,000 people are dead. The number of dead to rise to well over 100,000. It's struggling to deal with the catastrophe caused by the earthquake and the tsunami it created. It's coming again! Coming again! Hello and welcome back, Bad Day HQers. Today we are revisiting one of the worst disasters in living memory. We are exploring the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. The Boxing Day Tsunami. The single worst tsunami in living history. Over 200,000 people were killed by torrential waves and over half a million were seriously injured. Millions of people were left homeless. This was a disaster of truly biblical proportions and many of you, like myself, may remember the day almost 20 years ago now. It was Christmas on 2004. A powerful, giant earthquake erupted under the sea off the coast of Sumatra in Indonesia. This set off the infamous tsunami. The earthquake was a magnitude 9.1 and ripped apart a 900 mile fault line where the Indian and Australian plates meet. This was immensely powerful as a heavy ocean plate slips under a much lighter continental. Within half an hour of the quake, the first waves began to reach the Asian mainland. Thing and no one can stand against them. The first beach hit is Banda Aka, and more than 100,000 people were killed as the waves pounded the city. Then the tsunami waves hit northwestern Indonesia. The city was decimated and turned to rubble. In succession, the tsunami rolled over long coastlands in Thailand, India, and Sri Lanka, killing tens of thousands more. In a few hours past the initial impact, coming again! Coming again! the world's eyes were fixed on the Indian Ocean. Charities all mustered and the international response began marching out to aid. The world saw public schools and hospitals levelled by waves and many injured were left untreated and suffering for days as wounds turned infected and conditions worsened. So many bodies were left floating and littering the streets, they were forced to resort to mass graves during the days after the impact. The immediate responses from international aid was mainly fresh water and food. Temporary shelter was flown in and water purification tablets were distributed. During the following days, the waves galloped across the oceans. Over 5,000 miles from where it began, it claimed its final victims on the coast of South Africa, making the initial death toll over 230,000 people, making it easily one of the deadliest disasters in modern history. In the days after the initial impact, disease and starvation seeped in. Cholera and lack of fresh water and food led to many people becoming sick, and without any real infrastructure, help was impossible. Communication lines and electricity were severed, railways and roads destroyed. Since the tsunami in 2004, governments and many aid groups across the world have really prioritised managing disaster risk reduction and being prepared for things like this, especially in high risk zones near plate boundaries like in the Pacific. The Hyugo Framework for Action was the coalition of aid after the disaster. This paved the way for international cooperation around disaster management, especially around earthquake sensors and early warning signals in the Indian Ocean. Many local communities were since trained in evacuation and disaster response in the hope that we could prevent further disasters in the future. The Boxing Day tsunami sets the modern day tone for the need for good disaster management. Since the episode, Indonesia and the Indian Ocean continue to experience major and high-profile earthquakes and tsunamis which continually test our defences and our ability to respond and recover. Early warning systems and training our populations about responding to natural disasters has made tsunamis and disasters much less dangerous. Communities now are far more aware of the dangers and the governments have put far more precautions in place. 
However, in December of 2018, the volcano at Anak Krakatau erupted and caused massive undersea landslides in the Sundar Strait. This triggered a tsunami that struck beaches in both Sumatra and Java, and there was no warning system from the active volcano, and more than 400 people were killed. Since then, the Indonesian government have been working on warning systems for volcanoes, adding sensors for them, and increasing their natural disaster warning network. A year after the original disaster in 2005, over £350 million had been donated by the British public, and billions by the worldwide populations. This was used mainly in rebuilding of the countries affected. In 2006, the Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning System was officially set up, and this was the first standardised national organisation devoted entirely to early protections from tsunamis. The consequences of the 2004 tsunami are very difficult to fully evaluate. Many countries have coastlines in the Indian Ocean and they were all critically affected. From South Africa and India to Sri Lanka, Indonesia and Brunei, the real cost of lives from this modern disaster is possibly incalculable. The direct implications of the 2004 tsunami go far beyond the initial human cost. Think about the environmental and the amount of animals and habitats that were totally destroyed by the tsunamis and the earthquakes. Think about the cost of human lives in hospitals who couldn't get treatment or lost their life support systems because of it. To put the Boxing Day tsunami in scale, it's estimated that the initial energy released from the earthquake and tsunami was equivalent to over 23,000 Hiroshima-type nuclear bombs. The waves caused by this reached over 100 feet tall and they travelled across the Indian Ocean at 500 miles per hour, which is the speed of a jet plane. For more information on this topic, I've left links in the description, so check them out to learn more about this. It's a huge topic and I couldn't go into many issues in this short video. If you want to see more videos like this, then please drop a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to Bad Day HQ. Thanks for watching.